In mid-August of 2016, I made an exploratory trip in a Newfoundland's 2,895 square kilometer Beta Nord Wilderness Reserve. It was in preparation for a cross-Newfoundland expedition. Twelve days in paradise. Diamond Lake to meet a pond. First objective is to make my way up to Mount Sylvester. Great day to start a trip. The 1240 foot Mount Sylvester towers over the otherwise barren country and was the starting point of my 50 kilometer trailless route to the eastern side of Mita Pond. I've been walking uh, about 20 minutes or so and I'm almost up to the top of Mount Sylvester. Right there behind me, Diamond Lake below and my raft is right down there straight ahead in that little cove if you can see so not a bad hike up this far uh, another few minutes and I'll be at the summit made it up to the top of Mount Sylvester and uh, I'm just here hanging out by the uh, cairn that was erected by James Howley in 1887, Newfoundland explorer and geologist James Patrick Howley and his four Mi'kmaq guides left the south coast of the island by canoe and traveled arduously up the Beta Nord River to Mount Sylvester. From here they continued down the Terranova River to the ocean, some 200 kilometers total distance. Howley started the rock cairn for use of triangulation as he mapped the interior of our island. Mount Sylvester is named after Mi'kmaq hunter Sylvester Joe. Joe's expertise helped William Epps Cormac, another Newfoundland explorer, cross our island from east to west in 1822. Cormac named the mountain after his skillful guide the day they scaled it. Right here, I'm inflating my six pound alpaca mule raft. This revolutionary boat makes backcountry paddling lighter and opens a door to endless tripping opportunities. Check out Mount Sylvester in the background. It was the best view I've ever had chopping a stick of wood.
Uh, it's night one here, and uh, I got a little camp set up just uh, off the side of a small little pond, which is in behind Diamond Lake, and not far, as you can see, still from Mount Sylvester. So, put in a short shift today. Just went a couple kilometers, and. Uh, just get my feet wet. I don't want to push too hard day one. So it's nice to, to start light and you can ease your way into uh, to a long trip like uh, the one I'm doing now. This site was a pretty hard spot to round up wood, to be honest with you. Uh, there was a few sticks kicking around. I had to work hard to get them. And when I did, I had enough for the evening meal and a cup of coffee. And of course, to have a nice fire under that beautiful moon you just seen. And also enough for the morning kettle and some oatmeal. But uh, that's it. Some spots in the interior are like this. Uh, the highest tree around is a tuckamore, and they're not dead, they're green, so uh, you make the best with what you got, and I happen to find just enough dry sticks to do the job. Well, it's uh, day two here, around 11 o'clock, and uh, just following uh, Caribou Pass, trying to get myself to the next watershed, around uh, two kilometers away, and uh, it's not going too bad. That's all you gotta really look for when you're in these uh, bushwhacking type situations, where there's no trail in front of you. Uh, you gotta size it up and look for paths that were made by uh, predominantly caribou out this way, but you know moose as well depending on what area you're at So I'm just kind of following one now and right ahead that looks like one, but it's going into some thick stuff and uh, I don't think there's much I can do about that. I'm gonna keep going and hope it doesn't get too uh, too messy anyways uh, day two plugging along and uh, It's a beauty. I'd say 20 25 degrees Now, tell me that is not beat to a snot. Look at that. Looks like it was landscaped by the caribou themselves. So, uh, oh, just you find a trail like that? What a blessing. It beats walking through uh, this stuff right here because sometimes that's what it comes down to. But right now, following this caribou pass and uh, just over that ridge, a little bit further and then I'll be to the next uh, system of uh, water that I'm trying to trying to reach here. So, still plugging along at day two. So uh, I uh, I made it to the water system here. I was trying to get to. Took me an uh, hour hour and a half to go only two or three kilometers, but uh, it was through some rough uh, rough patches of Tuckamore where I was trying to follow caribou trails in between uh, but I made it and uh, there's a strong southeasterly wind coming off this lake here so it's coming across this way and I need to go down here so 
So it'll be a little dicey making my way down, but it shouldn't be too bad. It's gonna be a good test for the raft. Uh, first time in uh, moderate uh, winds, I guess. And when I get down there, I'll uh, make the decision I want to do, want to do next because there's a small portage there I have to make uh, to another little pond. But uh, worry about that when I get there. Lovely day, still a lovely day, and uh, soaking it up. So I'm, uh, I'm at the back of the pond now. I was paddling on for uh, about an hour or two there earlier. I'm at the point now where I need to portage to the next system of uh, ponds or string of ponds I need to, to connect in order to get into Easter Meal Peg. Uh, I would say I got around a kilometer walk to get to the next pond. I went ahead and scouted earlier uh, the, the trail and looks like there are some decent caribou uh, runs there. So I'm going to try to follow those for as long as I can. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep on them long term. You kind of go from one to another into the Tuckamore or bush and then uh, you get back onto a trail. Uh, hopefully is what, is what you hope for, right? minimal bushwhacking uh, so that Tuckamore is is the ideal situation Busted my ass here to try to get uh, through a thick patch of Tuckamore, but uh, I just keep losing the caribou path. It goes into this thick stuff, and uh, I can't find it, but you just gotta look hard. Usually the trees have grown over the top of the path, and, uh, but if you look down deep enough, you'll see the rot that they made, just from being uh, beat down for so long. But uh, yeah, I'm just making my way here day three to, uh, a pond coming up, which is going to get me a bit closer to uh, Easter Meal Peg. So moving along. If you look to the right center of the screen, you can still see Sylvester back there hanging on. Later on, I stumble upon this little hole, probably dug by a caribou or maybe even a bear. Over the next few days, I was awarded with some very cool close encounters. Wow, that was a nice stag there. I got to around 15, 20 yards of him. Man, that was cool.
This reserve is a ground for the Middle Ridge Caribou Herd. They were to become a close acquaintance of mine in the upcoming days. That right there is uh, centuries of caribou just digging through these these lands, and uh, I mean it's it's pretty cool to see uh, a trail that has been used that much that it almost looks like it's a four wheeler or a quad trail at, at certain points, and it is it is just beat down, and it's something else to to be in the presence of uh, uh, this type of land. To know that, uh, and this is their place and not mine, but uh, just an unbelievable experience as I'm making my way through the Bay de Nord uh, Wilderness Reserve. <laughs> oh, this is great. You can't beat the rafts here. Third pond of the day, making good time. One more pond to cross and I'll be at my destination. This is a rocky one. <laughs> and hopscotch here. Oh, I almost lost her. There's a bit of wind coming at me now. Looks like Mother Nature decided to take a uh, an early morning pee here, and a big one at that. Yet, man. Geez, you're everywhere. Every time I poke my head out, there's a caribou. Finally made her to Eastern Meal Peg and uh, the rain's clearing off. Looking 
to be a nice evening and I'm excited to uh, make my way over. Uh, there's a river that runs up from uh, Amida Pond and I want to get over there to where that river runs. Uh, I guess it leaves Eastern Meal Peg and goes down to Amida Pond. I want to go to the mouth of that and uh, see if I can set the camp off. Kids in Eastern Meal Peg. Probably got the whole pond to myself. Woo! Oh, buddy, what a lake she is. It is one massive body of water, and I'm only in a small portion of it, so. I'm just a small, small speck in this big body of water right now, and I'm gonna move right along. Next up, Meet a Pond. First thing though, I gotta find a campsite for this evening. Oh, it's around quarter after six, and uh, it's campsite time. I like to have one uh, picked by at least two hours before dark. That gives me some time to gather firewood, get the tent up, and uh, get some chores done before I can't see. Uh, so anyways, that's what I like to do. Moving along. Good morning from uh, Eastern Meal Peg. I uh, got in last night around 6.37. By the time I got camp set up and got a good feed in my belly, uh, it was lights out. I had a pretty strenuous day yesterday, so uh, uh, the rest was well deserved. Uh, when I came up on my site here, I actually interrupted uh, a resting caribou who was right here. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can tell where it was, it's a little beat down and matted. Uh, it was a lot more matted there yesterday evening when I first came in, and he sp he spooked off. But uh, you know, his rent was up, and it was my turn to put my uh, my site here. So <laughs> this is it. This is my dandy little campsite. Got the uh, morning fire on the go there. About ready to fire up a cup of coffee. Actually, the kettle was boiled. It's ready to go. So gonna enjoy that the once and uh, here's the pond and right down there is a river mouth and I got a couple of dandy fish yesterday uh, some brook trout and winnanish and uh, I'm gonna go back down there and see if I can get a cup more now shortly after I have my cup of coffee so that's the plan here this morning Nice one.
Nice size here. here in the bush. I'm uh, signed up to be a caribou here today. <laughs> Jeez, they got quite the road here. Easy going for them and me. Looks like I got a visitor. Might be Gene or his son Steve, who knows. I'll give them a wave when they come by, I guess. Uh, ready to break camp here in Eastern Meal Peg. I've uh, outdone my two day stay and now I'm going to move down the river and head to, to meet a pond. So I have around a kilometer and a half of river walking and running. Uh, won't be much running going on in the raft because it's pretty shallow. But uh, either way, it's going to be quite the journey down that river. So a kilometer and a half, two kilometers to get to the entrance to meet a pond. So this is it here now. Everything's pretty much packed up, ready to ready to rumble here. Fire's dying out. I got to put a bit of water on that. Very important thing to do. Don't leave a burning fire, especially out here in pristine wilderness. I uh, would never want to be the creator of a forest fire. Uh, there's no need. I've also noticed this. It doesn't matter where you go. Uh, there's always going to be a little bit of something. I'm, geez, I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe 80 kilometers deep here in uh, in the middle of the central Newfoundland and uh, there's still old cans and they're Milwaukee beer cans and an old school Sprite can let me show you so I mean this was something that was left here a long long time ago I'd say back when I was maybe a young pup or uh, or even earlier so at least 20 years for sure I couldn't, could see, couldn't see it being any sooner than that, but uh, it's a no-no. So I'm pretty disappointed to see the mess that was left by these people, and uh, I continue to see it in all these wilderness places. Last year in the Avalon Wilderness Reserve, same thing. Uh, it's just unacceptable. Uh, sometimes on the East Coast Trail, so people just need to uh, pull up their socks here, and uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of packing out, and that's all I do. I, I take it with you. Or if possible, if it's something that's small, like a paper wrapper, we'll burn it in the fire. But uh, that's my two cents, and uh, it's going to be a good day here. Almost a meter pond now. 
only another uh, half a kilometer and I'll be setting the raft down in the uh, the vast waters of that huge huge uh, lake so on my way oh there it is now so it's looking pretty windy out there gonna have to make a decision when I get down there am I gonna fight the winds to the other side or uh, sit back and uh, see if they die off a little bit it's only 11 o'clock uh, I guess I'll make a plan when I get down there I don't want to fight nothing too big in this raft especially the size of the lake it is it could be risky anyways almost there The timing of this trip has been uh, phenomenal with regards to the amount of blueberries uh, right in peak blueberry season and I've been supplementing my diet as often as I can uh, maybe at least two to three large handfuls of blueberries a day and I could easily eat more uh, it's just that uh, I'm already getting a lot of fiber with my oatmeal and uh, some other food I have so I don't want to go overload and give myself a bad stomach but uh, it sure is good especially throughout the day as I'm moving along to have a quick snack lots of sugar in there and uh, really give you that kick to keep moving on so delicious now and see what happens. Can't go out there out there in that live from the shores of Midapan here this morning and uh, literally the shores check this view out 
This is where I landed last night. I, uh, the wind picked up again in the evening. I got moving into the Metapon system and made my way around seven kilometers down through it. The wind picked up around 6.30 and kind of forced me into this little short. And this is it. Not a whole lot of room. Rafts over there. And uh, the fog's burning off. It's around 7, quarter after 7. So once the fog burns off and the wind has died down a nice bit, I'm going to take off and make my way down towards uh, my pickup point to check that out. As I said, Gene will be getting me there now. Uh, oh, look. A group of ducks. That's an old salmon lodge, and of course Long Harbor River is a salmon river. What I managed to do was sag myself a uh, salmon. Roasted brook trout and Atlantic salmon over an open fire. With the land all to yourself, what else could you ask for? The plan was to set up camp at the remote pickup lodge for one night and then go further explore the Metapan area. But high winds and rains had other plans. A bit of thunder too. I pulled my fish up from last night, had them left in the pond to keep them cool, and a couple of leeches were trying to get a piece. He's getting away.
seeing me at my pickup point for two days, as I was stranded by wind and rain, Jean decided to come in a few days early to see if everything was okay. Without two-way messaging and my spot satellite communicator, I was unable to indicate otherwise. Upon his arrival, I decided to head out a bit early after a highly successful outing. 